Welcome to How to Beat a Zone Defense. All over the internet, there are people trying to make a quick buck selling flag football plays, which consist of nothing more than a bunch of diagrams. Diagrams that look something like this. This diagram by itself is almost completely worthless. In fact, a thousand different diagrams like this are almost completely worthless. There is so much more to a play than just a diagram. And if you're only getting a diagram, it's like getting a car without an engine or without wheels. In addition to the diagram, which is actually the least important part, you need the defense you're going against. When to use the play. A detailed description of how each player needs to execute their part of the play. The quarterback reads. What adjustments the defense can make to stop the play and what you need to do when that happens. And of course, which plays you should use. Let's go over each one of these one by one to show you how to beat a zone defense. Now the first thing we need to do is include the defense. There, that was easy. This play is designed for use against a zone defense, specifically a 2-3-2 defense. Personally, I prefer plays that can be used against both a shallow zone defense and a deep zone defense, but for explanation purposes, this will do just fine. It's also for seven man, but the principles can be applied to eight man and six man as well. And in the headache offense, we go over this. It's very important to know what defense the play is designed for. Otherwise, it's pretty much pointless. If you tried to use this play against man defense, it would defeat the point. You might get lucky, but there are a whole lot better plays to use against man defense. I wouldn't waste a play with this one. Also, you'll notice from the formation that this particular play is for a league that allows blocking. If you tried to use this play in a non-blocking league, it wouldn't work. Don't worry though, there's an offense for every type of league in the headache offense, so stick with me. But for purposes of this example, we'll assume it's a blocking league. The execution is incredibly important. Believe it or not, little details such as where a player is looking while making a cut can make the difference between a play working or not. A professional coordinator knows this. Every play has key details that are absolutely necessary for the play to work. The teams who follow these details will win championships, and the ones who don't will not. If you don't believe me, check out a book written by any of the great football coaches and see how insanely detailed they get. This specific play package is fairly simple for receivers, but more difficult for the quarterback. The left split end lines up about seven yards away from the tackle and runs a post corner. His initial break should be at about seven yards. And he must sell the post. This is very important, as you'll see a bit later. He should aim at the opposite sideline at about 20 to 25 yards depth. Then about four to five steps into the post, he should break back to the left sideline, making sure to keep distance from the backside corner. The right split end should also line up about five yards away from the tackle and run a regular seam route straight up the field. The right wide out should line up at least three to five yards from the sideline and at least five yards from the split end. He will run a five yard square in and look for the ball in the bubble area between the corner and linebacker. It's very important that he make the first half of his route look like a streak. The corner must not be able to tell what he's going to do before the break. And after initial block of about one or two seconds, the center runs a hook route, about five yards right above where the left tackle lined up. This spacing is very important and you want your center to help block before going out on his route to make sure your two tackles can adjust to the rushers and give your quarterback enough time to make his reads. And if there's a third rusher from the middle of the field, the center should attempt to pick him up instead of going out on his route. Again, your league may not allow blocking and that's fine. There's great stuff in the headache offense for you too, so stick with me. Possibly the most important part of a play is the quarterback reads. A lot of work goes into creating the right reads. The reads are the brains of the play. 
The reads are what make the routes make sense, and it takes a lot of work to come up with a simple way of processing complicated information quickly. Good reads also allow any quarterback to be successful, even if they aren't Division I college quality. If they can throw the basic routes and are willing to learn the reads correctly, they can pick a defense apart as well or better than anyone. In this play, the quarterback has three basic reads. He first looks at the right side bubble between the linebacker and quarterback and underneath the safety. If neither of these three defenders collapse in on the bubble, then pass to the wide open wideout running into it. Read number two, who's collapsing the bubble? If either the linebacker or safety are collapsing the bubble, pass to the receiver running in their area. If the linebacker leaves his zone, pass to the center. If the safety leaves his zone, pass to the right split end. Read number three, is the weak safety cheating? If you notice that the weak safety is coming over to pick up the right split end, then notify the quarterback to look for the left split end on the post corner. It'll be a touchdown and you shouldn't have to worry about him cheating again after that. Now the play is designed to automatically take advantage of most of the adjustments the defense can make. The routes are very carefully designed. But what if the corner starts following the wideout into the bubble? Well, this is why it's so important that the receiver make the first part of his route look like a streak so the corner can't tell what he's going to do before the break. The quarterback should still be able to get the ball to the receiver with the corner following him. He'll just have to pass it to him like the play was being run against man coverage. As long as the corner doesn't know what the receiver is going to do before the break, you'll be fine. But in order for the corner to be honest and fear the streak, you must run enough plays where he actually runs a streak. That brings us to point number six. There's a lot that goes into choosing which plays your team should learn. The fewer plays in your game plan, the better. Most teams just have a playbook full of tons of random diagrams, but they will all get beaten by a team who has strategically chosen just the right combination of plays that they can run over and over in a game and outsmart and out-execute every opponent they play. Execution comes down to repetition and practice, and it's just not possible to learn 50 plays like that in flag football. But the reason teams think they need so many plays is because the other team will make adjustments. The smart team loves when the other team makes adjustments because they are ready to take advantage of them. For example, in our play, one of only two likely adjustments the defense will make is to have the corner follow the right wideout when he runs a square in route. So we take advantage of that with a companion play. The left split end starts his route the same way as before, except he never actually does the second break. He continues on toward the opposite sideline at about 20 to 25 yards. This is why his aiming point is so important in the previous play. The right split end runs a seam route just like before, except at about 12 to 15 yards, he breaks outside to the sideline at a point two or three yards underneath his break. The right wideout runs a square end just like before, but this time continues it all the way to the middle of the field. Just before he gets to the linebacker, he turns around and goes back to the bubble where he settles in and waits for a possible pass. The center just does the same thing as before. The quarterback again has three reads. Make sure the corner is following the right wideout. If he isn't, pass to the wideout in the bubble just like before. Assuming the corner is following the wideout, the quarterback then reads the strong safety. If he's in loose coverage with the right split end on his break to the outside, then pass to him. If he is in tight coverage on his break to the outside, pass to the left split end deep on his post. Companion plays are essential. Never learn a single play. A single play is worth very little, unless you only plan on running at one time. No play worth learning ever comes alone. It's always part of a package. Not only do you need to learn how, when, and why to run the play, 
you need to learn a couple of companion plays and you need to learn how these plays work together. Companion plays influence how you run other plays and how you execute certain patterns in plays that might not even be a part of the same package. And does all this sound overwhelming to you? Don't worry. The Headache Offense and Unbeatable Defense does all of this for you. Just go to flagfootballplays.com and click on Headache Offense, if you haven't already. Not only will you get a complete offense and defensive system, one that will work for whatever type of weird league you're in, but you'll also get some very unique pass patterns that are impossible to cover, and some incredible loopholes that will instantly give your team an enormous advantage against the opposition. And they work for four and five man teams and youth leagues as well. You'll also learn the secrets behind pulling flags, and the secrets to playing man and zone coverage, the secrets behind rushing the passer, and just about everything else you need to become a successful flag football team. Plus, you'll get my personal help to make sure you get the best offense and defense possible for your league. And be sure and check out the testimonials. They are incredible. And of course, you'll get a ton of plays. So if you're looking to get better, why not get the best? Just click the link on your screen. You won't be disappointed, I promise.